Hey, welcome to Q&A, where you ask your questions on faith and life, and I do my best to give a biblical perspective. Hey, as always, you can ask your questions on slido.com, use the hashtag ALC23, we'd love to hear from you. Well, let's jump into today's question. There are these Christians that keep coming to my door and talking about Mother God and feasts. Seems like false doctrine. How should I respond? And it's true, there are a growing number of people, it seems, who are knocking on doors, not just the traditional Jehovah's Witness and Latter-day Saints, but there are these other uh, knockoff cults that seem to be floating around under the guise of Christianity. Um, but I don't actually think they're Christian. In fact, the very fact that you identified that there's some false doctrines, i.e. they've obviously talked to you about things that don't uh, reconcile with Scripture uh, and those things, that means by definition they're not Christian. Uh, so, you know, I, I say that not in a judgmental way, but we need to draw boundaries. And when people transgress those boundaries, they're not Christian. They've stepped outside the bounds of Christianity, of Orthodox Christianity. Uh, so I just want to make that clear. Now, you've asked, how should you respond when people like that come knocking on the door? Um, that's a good question. I know how I respond, and, and probably that's not necessarily the best way um, if you talk to my wife, it's probably she, she thinks I'm a little bit hard. But, you know, I get that there's a natural tendency that people want to engage them and think, you know, if I'm hospitable, I could win them over. If I have a talk with them, then I could show them where what the Bible actually says and I can win them over. Uh, and my experience over over 30 something years is you don't. You know, the reason that they're knocking on your door is that they believe what they believe and they're trying to convert you. Um, and they're primed, ready to go. In fact, many of them knock on the door, sadly, know the scriptures better than many Christians do. And so sitting down and trying to discuss with them is not really going to cut it in the way that we often think it does. Um, I, I think we should be we, we should be gentle, we should be loving, we, we should be um uh, we should be kind towards people. We shouldn't be um, arrogant. We shouldn't be uh, angry towards them. We shouldn't be dismissive of them. I think in a loving way, we can say thanks, but no thanks um, and, and close the door. But but my advice is actually not to engage with them really beyond that. And, and this may surprise you, but that approach is based on my reading of some scriptures. There's a At the end of his life, the um, the Apostle John, he's looking back and he's the last one there and, and people asking for his advice. What, what advice would he pass on to the church? And he's seen things come, he's seen things go. Um, and, and he writes in, in his second epistle there, second letter, um, warning of, of uh, people who have abandoned the faith or twisted the faith or perverted the faith or, or, or claimed a faith but never really had one. And he says in verse 7, let me bring it up, it's, it's worth, worth noting. He says, many deceivers have gone out into the world. Watch out that you do not lose what we have worked so hard to achieve. In other words, don't be taken in by these people and undo all the work that's been done to help you um, yield yourself to Christ and grow in your faith. He says, be diligent so that you receive your full reward. And then he goes on, and this is this is a bit that makes us uncomfortable at times, but it's wisdom. It's from God. If anyone comes to your meeting and does not teach the truth about Christ, don't invite that person into your home or give any kind of encouragement. Anyone who encourages such people becomes a partner in their evil work. Uh, and, and so here we have this advice from John looking back and he says, you know what? There are people who are there that they are deceived and therefore they are deceivers. They're going out trying to win people to a distorted view of God, to a, a false view of God. And he said, you're not going to win them over by having anything to do with them. So don't. And in fact, the, when you give them time of day, when you uh, show hospitality to them, invite them into your home, have conversations, you are legitimizing their position. Um, and he says, by definition, therefore, you are partnering with them. So he says, don't go there. Um, and it doesn't mean to say we're rude or arrogant or hostile. It just means very firmly, very um, gently, though, we say, look, thanks. But I, I, I'm a Christian. I have my faith. Um, I know what I believe. Uh, God bless you. I've got things to do. And you send them on their way. That's the, that's how I respond and based on the advice of Scripture. 
Um, I'm sure others would have different ways of engaging, but but that's been my experience. And as I say, it comes about because I've found over the years of, with many, many visits that it doesn't matter how much I engage in conversation, uh, I've never won anybody to the Lord through that because the, the Holy Spirit has to be at work convicting them. They have to be open and they are going into dialogue with me to prove me wrong, not to with an openness that may be the wrong. And so, um, yeah. I take the advice of John. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to send them on their way lovingly, um, gently, but but and, and graciously, but but directly. So yeah, love to hear your thoughts on it. But uh, that's it for now. Until next time, God bless.